Another crucial step tonight in the development of a COVID-19 vaccine, an inoculation developed by Oxford University in AstraZeneca has been found to be between 70 and 90 percent effective, depending on the dose. After promising results in trials for Pfizer and Moderna, it's AstraZeneca and Oxford University's chance to show what their COVID-19 vaccine can do. The results are mixed, with the jab able to prevent between 70 and 90% of infections, depending on dose. Trial results show that perfecting the dose could further increase protection. Pfizer and Moderna have both reported over 90% protection. Cost and storage is where the Oxford vaccine may have the upper hand. It can be kept at fridge temperature, meaning it will be much easier to distribute around the world. In contrast, Pfizer's vaccine needs to be stored at minus 70 degrees Celsius. Governments will be purchasing this vaccine and making it available to the populations of those countries. But also Gavi, the Global Alliance for Vaccines and Immunisation, will be supplied with vaccine and they can make vaccine available to low-income countries. AstraZeneca is ready to make 3 billion doses worldwide next year. Before that, up to 60,000 people will take part in final stage trials around the world. Ollie Barrett joins us live from London for more on this. Ollie, even though other drug makers have touted better results for their vaccines, this is still seen as a triumph, isn't it? Absolutely right. The uh, d d divergence in the numbers that we are hearing uh, can be explained pretty simply. If, uh, according to this trial, patients took one full dose and then later on oh, a second full dose, the efficacy came out at 62%. If patients were given half a dose at first and then a full dose a few weeks later, the efficacy came out at 90%. So that's where the 70% number com comes from. It's effectively an average of those two different ways of doing it. But now the regulators here in the UK and elsewhere in the world will be looking at whether they can approve this vaccine on the basis of doing it the latter way around. And if so, that would mean that we have a vaccine here that is 90% effective, but much more reason for optimism as well. Uh, adding to this, the fact that for those people that the vaccine wasn't effective for in preventing infection, it does seem to have uh, meant that they didn't get a, a serious infection. No one in the trial who received the vaccine needed to be hospitalised or developed serious cases of COVID-19. So that is very good news indeed as well. The tests also appear to show that this vaccine can stop transmission from asymptomatic people. So add all of that together. And this is very, very good news indeed, according to uh, the British scientists involved in developing it and many others watching from around the world. So Ali, I guess the uh, big question is just how soon can a global vaccine rollout uh, take place? That's right. And here in Britain, the Health Secretary Matt Hancock is saying that the National Health Service is ready to go from the beginning of December. That might be a bit optimistic in terms of time frame, but he is certainly hopeful that some people will start to receive this vaccine and potentially others from Pfizer and Moderna, um, the Pfizer at least, uh, by the end of uh, this year. Uh, definitely thinking that the bulk of the rollout will be in 2021, but wanting to get cracking as quickly as possible. It is the case that the Oxford vaccine is easier to manufacture, easier to store, easier to distribute as well. It's also cheaper, significantly cheaper than the Pfizer and Moderna jabs. And Oxford AstraZeneca have said that they uh, are going to sell it at cost to developing nations and they will try and get three billion doses out in 2021. So there is the realistic prospect now, if this vaccine passes, uh, uh, the later stages in terms of testing and then regulatory approval, that it really could start being rolled out quite quickly. All right, many thanks for that update on some good news there coming out of Britain. Ollie Barrett speaking to us from London.